Good morning, saints. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are certainly uh, glad that God has once again blessed us to come out to be in a place where we can worship and serve Him in spirit and in truth. As we uh, commence, we would like for you to turn with us to Him, number 292. And let us sing together. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. We are living in some very perilous times right now. There's an awful lot going on in our world. Our folks are so much uh, in, in, a, in a world of confusion. Uh, not only the saints, but also those that we see on a daily basis. The messages that are coming out are confusing, and folks don't know which way to go. Uh, but I can assure you that the scripture still says that I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which comes my help, because our help comes from the Lord. In number 292, listen as we uh, share in these words. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take in His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the same. that there are many, O oh Lord, who have been blessed to, re to come out of hospitals, 
But then there are some we've also been informed of that have gone on and they have an appointment with you. Father, we praise you for those that have died knowing you, for you said to be absent in the body, they are home in the presence of the Lord. And how we pray, O oh God, that you would yeah. bring comfort and peace to those families. And we pray also, Lord, that we might have a message of encouragement for those that uh, are not quite sure where uh, the eternal destination might be. But it, it proves to us, O oh God, that your word is true. Yeah. And that there is an appointed time for each of us. And we need to be prepared for it. So, Father, we pray that you will bless this service. We pray that you will bless those under the sound of my voice. We pray that you will keep us encouraged, keep us motivated, keep us moving in the direction that you have called and commissioned us to. And we will carefully give your name to praise for it's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts say thank you, Lord. Thank you. And amen. amen. We need to continue to praise God for all that is going on in our lives and the things that are going on around us. It's so important because in a world filled with confusion, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm so minded that we need to go back in our history. We need to go back in biblical history. We need to think about how things were. See, none of this stuff has caught God off guard. And yet, when we go through the text, we will see time and time and time again when the world was upset like it is right now, but there was a different focus. And we need to prayerfully make sure that we're arming ourselves so that we can arm our people, so that we can arm those we come in contact with. There are folks that are going to come and make an appeal to you, not because of the great things that they have been accomplished, but folks are scared. And folks don't know which way to go. And I was sharing with a, a, a friend of mine that uh, there was someone else that I talked to, and we talked for about an hour and 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy that used to tell me quite often that, you know, excuse my French, but this time I'm just listening, and all he kept talking about was the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Mm -hmm. There are folks that God has got their attention mm -hmm. because of this Coverna virus. Amen? And I might be still pronouncing it wrong, so y'all just charge that in my, my uh, broken English. Amen? Amen? At this particular time, I do want to uh, just make you aware that there are, uh, in our, our primary schedule, and uh, uh, the thought for today will be communicated by our church administrator. Just listen up, pay close attention to what is being said as we move forward. Amen? Amen. Thought for today. As you sit quietly in my presence, remember that I am a God of abundance. I will never run out, run out of resources. My capacity to bless you is unlimited. You live in a world of supply and demand where necessary things are often scarce. Even if you personally make enough, you see poverty in the world around you. It is impossible for you to comprehend the lavishness of my provision, the fullness of my glorious riches. Though spending time in my presence, you gain glimpses of my overflowing vastness. These glimpses are tiny foretaste of what you will experience eternally in heaven. Even now, you have access to as much of me as you have faith to receive. Rejoice in my abundance, living by faith, not by sight. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 Our key theme and verse for 2020 is Matthew 6.33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. As you know that many things that we have in our uh, regular schedule are being readjusted, so just follow your bulletins. Uh, we don't have anything uh, earth-shattering upcoming. I do know at the end of June we would normally be celebrating Men's Day, and I'm uh, prayerfully pondering how we're going to work that through. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Um, in addition to that, uh, let us be mindful that there are a number of things that are happening in our community. Uh, there are some things that I want our staff to be uh, doing some research on and follow up. We have in the state of Pennsylvania, in about maybe three weeks, there is an election and they are pushing for folks to do uh, mail election. We need you to touch base with all our members and make sure that these things do not catch them off guard. If they need to sit in for a registration, let's follow up with them. Let's make sure that they get the things that they need so that voices can be heard. You know, the Bible still says you have not because you ask not. So, uh, on, on their behalf, I'm their intercessor. I'm asking on their behalf that we would take it up a notch and we get a hold of them. So very often this time is going to come right on through and we're going to miss that opportunity if we don't become aggressive and seize the moment. Amen? In addition to that, there are a number of uh, uh, um, folks that have been hospitalized, some we've had the opportunity to, to talk with and uh, to communicate with them. We want to continue to pray for them and pray with them. Uh, I did uh, get some updates on some of those that are on our uh, sick and shut-in and prayer list. And um, I talked to uh, Brother El uh, Elder Bradshaw, his brother is still in the same condition. Now, that's a testimony to God, and that's the kind of testimony that we want to hear, amen? Several weeks ago, they were uh, rushed down into the Maryland area because they were told it's time. And uh, they were going back and forth. But here, uh, when I sent word, I say, I need an update on your brother. And he said, praise God, he's still in the same condition, you know? So he's still communicating. Uh, we also uh, heard from um, Reverend Anderson this morning about the young lady we were praying for with her, and uh, she is well and running and doing quite well. Uh, we have uh, been, I talked to uh, Sister Johnson on yesterday, and uh, uh, one of the things that she was sharing with me is that she lost a very close friend. Matter of fact, uh, Joyce Moss, she's been in our worship services. Mm -hmm. um, she was amongst those three. That was Sister Bellamy, uh, Sister Johnson, and Miss Moss. All of them, they were very close. And uh, Sister Smith, you should know her too. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is that uh, Sister Moss went home, I believe it was yesterday morning. And Sister Johnson, she had talked to her the morning before. And she was telling her how she missed her because Miss Johnson... She was a missionary on that block. She would go back and forth and checking up on them and yeah. things of that nature. So, again, we want to not only pray for the families, but we need to pray for those that are impacted by those yes. things. Amen? Amen. Uh, we want to pray for our country. We want to pray also for all those in this community. Amen? So, uh, that being said, I'm going to ask that one of our deacons would lead us. To the throne of grace, we will stay in our places right now and uh, let us continue to look to the Lord for what God wants to do in our lives this day. Amen. Amen. Thank God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just like to say thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be in your presence this morning, Lord. We ask you just continue to guide us through this time, Lord, this trying time, Lord. We ask you to just touch each and every one that's here, touch our pastor, Lord, just continue to guide us in this step, Lord, throughout this um, season. But we just like to say thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning. Yes. We able to clothe ourselves and come out to the house of worship. Thank we like to thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to ah. have the privilege to come out to the house of worship, Lord, yes. and want to come out, Lord. We yes, just like Lord. to say thank you, Lord. Lord, as we just continue to guide our footsteps, as we continue to look to you for our help and strength. Mm -hmm. Lord, as we bless those who are our sickness, we know who they are, you know what they stand in need of right now. Lord, as we touch Mother Mary Graves and Sister Barney Green and Darling Green and all those who are in those nursing homes, mm. but living care facilities that can't not come out, can't yes, be visited. Yes, Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Ask you just touch yes, those families, yes, Lord, yes. that's missing their loved ones, Lord. Yes. Lord, yes. Lord ask you just bless all those who are sickness and all those who are going through right now, the mm. young children and, and the young grandchildren, Lord. Lord, yes, you just just keep them all safe from all the things, Lord. Yes, you just keep us 
Say in your hands as we continue to look to you for help and strength. Lord, just like I said, thank you, Lord, for all you've done in our lives, all you've done thus far, and all you've done is good. We cannot thank you enough. Yes, God. Lord, we just give you all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. We pray. Amen. 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 You know, uh, one of the things I want you to pray with and for me in, I have a uh, a habit of deflecting. Uh, say, for instance, things that I need, uh, I also need prayer. Uh, for those that don't know, Naomi was back in and out of the hospital uh, for some uh, activity this week. And uh, also our son-in-law. Um, I told you about all of the illnesses that, uh, how this virus had attacked their family in several layers. And yesterday, uh, they had the, uh, the memorial service for his grandmother. And uh, so here again, you know, when folks are going through, uh, at the time that his grandmother was in the hospital, his mother was in quarantine. So she did not get to spend that kind of comforting time. And I know that they were all, and with the way things are now, uh, services are very condensed. So uh, we want you to... Uh, help me to, to, to get that information. I know I, I get it out sometimes in our uh, uh, prayer circles, but there are times when perhaps we need to expand that circle. So pray for me in those areas. Amen? Uh, what we would like to do at this time, I'm going to read for you just right off the front of our, um, our uh, tithing and offering envelope the exhortation that comes from Scripture. See, even though we're not able to all gather as uh, we have in the past, but at the same time, we still have a responsibility uh, uh, to God uh, to, to, to meet the needs of His work. Amen? Uh, when uh, the Scripture says in Malachi 3 and 10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. You know, verses earlier than that, the scripture asks a question, will a man rob God? And, and, and yes, that is true. There are times when, if I don't show up, I figure, well, you know, uh, I just don't show up. One of the things that has been a blessing to me is how God has been blessing this ministry and blessing this house of faith, even in spite of our circumstances, in spite of the fact that we have to do distance worshiping, in spite of all those things, there are folks that they are very adamant. They want to make sure that they get their, their tithes and offerings to the church, and I, I need to salute them. Now, I'm not going to go into a, a, a lot of names right now, because if this was exclusively us, I would. But uh, I do want to let them know, if they are going to be watching, that uh, it is very much appreciated, and God is going to bless them. As a matter of fact, I shared that uh, recently with someone, how the Bible... Uh, makes it real clear that God is going to bless us. See, there's another verse that says, He'll bless you, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Amen. You know, we, we shouldn't be sitting there going tit for tat, see what I give the Lord and see what He give me back. Oh, no. You see, one thing is that this song we sing, say, you can't beat God's giving. No matter how hard you try. And my expression to that is, boy, it sure is fun trying. <laughs> because even though I might be trying, amen, I know I can't outgive him, but it's exciting to just be a blessing to the Lord and watch how God blesses back, you know? The blessing that he may pour me may not come to me. It may come through the generosity of a kind word that you say that will lift my spirit. It may be through the generosity of somebody else being blessed. It may be through the generosity. Uh, here's, here's a testimony. Uh, and uh, Sister Grace can tell it better than I because she heard it. Uh, when Danielle was up at the hospital, she was there on her birthday. And uh, somebody asked a question about how, uh, who said that she could uh, uh, 
be at the hospital or have a ninth birthday. And she turns around and tells him, Jesus says so. Amen. Mess folks' heads up. Yeah, Why? Right, See, those are the blessings that you need to be looking forward to. God blesses in his own unique way. So as, as uh, we go throughout the day, let's make certain that those that have our tithes and our offerings, that they are properly um, shared. And for those that are uh, sending them in, we praise God for Amen. you. Another thing is that there are some folks that are not members in this congregation that have made, God has generously touched their hearts, and they have become blessings to us as well. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to read a portion of scripture, if you would turn in your Bibles, to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Amen? Now, as you turn to Philippians chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. And at the end of that reading, uh, perhaps we will sing a little bit of uh, blessed quietness. And the reason I want to sing that particular song in conjunction with all that we're looking at right now is because our world has become so uh, chaotic. And, 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 and when you see all this chaos and when you see folks are... are, are crying out about, I want my rights, and I want this, and I want that, and some of the things that we see, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, folks coming out in the public, great big old rifles and shotguns on their shoulders at a, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a petition. And, and let me tell you something, that, that can be kind of nerve-wracking. Amen? You, you don't know when um, the nut's going to crack. I hope I didn't say that in the wrong way. Amen. But, uh, you know, you, 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 you just don't know what's going to happen these days. And uh, we have to be prayerfully careful. Amen? Amen. amen. Philippians chapter 4, if you have it, say amen. amen. Now, uh, for the moment, I'm going to read it out of the King James, but I'll be navigating through the English Standard Version throughout the morning. Amen? Amen. And uh, the reason I want to read it out of King James, for one, you have the same wording that I have. Number two, there are I, I particularly, I personally love the old raw King James language. Amen. And as we do so, uh, I uh, as we do so, I'll um, continue to share. Some good. Hey, praise the Lord. Uh, I, I, uh, to let you know, I did, I did bring my tape today. It's upstairs and I forgot to bring it down. So we can probably, uh, do some things later on. All right. Philippians chapter four, Philippians chapter four, beginning with verse one. Paul says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Mm -hmm. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Cynthia mm -hmm. that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also mm -hmm. and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, notice this, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do 
and the God of peace shall be with you. Thus, in the reading of God's word. And, and, and I want you to pay attention especially to verse 1 and verse 9. Because in verse 1, he gives a directive. Stand still. Stand fast. In verse 9, he says, the stuff that you're learning, this stuff that is fruitful, this stuff that is beneficial, he says, I want you to do it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Stand fast and do it. If you want to pull those two together, this morning we want to talk about staying in motion. Mm -hmm. Staying in motion. And it's so critical because many of the folks, and I'm not just talking about those that are unsaved and don't know which way they're going, but many of the saints are beginning to panic. Many of the saints are dropping back. Many of the saints are starting to reach out to others other than to our God to see their needs met. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, because if your phone's not ringing off the hook, they are calling somebody else. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Turn with me to 130. Blessed quietness. There's so much no noise that a lot of times we can't hear God. Amen. Amen. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He God, we 
we pray that by your spirit you will unite us as one yeah. and that you'll speak to us as one and speak to us collectively so that we might hear, know, and understand what it is that you want to communicate to us so that we can know how to better communicate to a yes. world around us, a yes. world filled with confusion, yes. a world that is looking for hope, a world, oh Lord, that is loaded with doubt, and a world, oh Lord, that is so distorted right now that, Lord, our focus is not where it needs to be. Yes. So, Father, we thank you. We count it as done. Thank for it's in Lord. Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Oh, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you. And amen. We want to talk this morning about staying in motion. Staying in motion. See, it's one thing to get started. And so many times I've been on the highway. And we're driving down the road. And all of a sudden, you have to look very carefully because somebody's just sitting there. When everybody started getting into these cell phones, it's nothing for you to be sitting in a red light and then the folks are not moving. I've actually come off the Dorada Avenue exit and I'm sitting way back, almost down on the expressway because the line was sold so long. But as I'm looking forward, I see this huge gap up there. And what was the gap about? Somebody not paying attention. They had stopped in motion. Amen? Amen? You and I need to stay in motion if we're going to get where God wants us to be, to do what He wants us to do, and to accomplish His will. Because it's not about you and I anymore. It's all about Him. It's, he says, my will be done Amen. on earth as well as in heaven. In those verses of Philippians chapter 4, there are several phrases that I have highlighted, and you might want to underline or highlight them yourself. Now, the language, the uh, word-for-word language in the English Standard Version is going to be slightly different than the King James. But I want you to, if you can, just uh, put some kind of a notation around these particular phrases. Because as Paul is writing to the church, amen, this, the, the, the scripture speaks about the fact all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's all profitable for doctrine, correction, instruction. Uh, and, 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 and reproof so that we might be able to grow and mature in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 1, when Paul says, Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and I long for, my joy and my crown, underline this phrase, stand fast thus in the Lord. Mm -hmm. It says, stand fast thus in the Lord. Uh, that, 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 that jumps out at me because Pastor Graves used to always say, even on New Year's, after we go through watch now night, night service, he said, uh, uh, Happy New Year, and then he would use this phrase, in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was always trying to help us to remember our focus ought to be in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Uh, verse 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And again, I say what? Rejoice. I want you to underline that first phrase, rejoice in the Lord. How long? Always. Okay? So what Paul is telling the church is regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstance, and this is the same exhortation that I leave you with today, regardless of, of the struggles, the hardships, the hard times, and things of that nature, you and I need to make sure that we are rejoicing in the Lord. Amen? The Bible also says, Paul told uh, in, in uh, the Ephesian letter, he said that we ought to uh, always, we ought to rejoice always in the Lord. And, and, and we need to be mindful of the fact that we ought to pray for everything. Yes. Jesus says over in uh, Luke, I believe, uh, 18, that man ought to pray always and not faint. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Over in uh, verse 6, Paul, the King James says, be careful for nothing. But uh, in the English Standard Version it says, do not be anxious. Yes. Amen? You need to underline that phrase. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious. Mm -hmm. Because in the world that we're living in right now, there's a lot of anxiety. Amen. A lot of Amen. folks don't know which way to go. A lot of folks are scratching their head trying to figure some things out. But the wonderful thing that I see, I see God operating in the background. Amen. I see God doing things that is blowing folks' minds. I see little kids that because they are forced to a different way of doing things, they are creative enough 
in the way that they are trying to thank folks and express thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, the Bible says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, God is ordained prey. Yeah, we can man. learn an awful lot from okay. our children. Yes. Just step back and yes. instead of moaning and groaning, yes. observe to see yes. how God is moving them. Yes. So don't be anxious. In that same verse, mm -hmm. he says, in everything by prayer and supplication, with Thanksgiving. Now there are three key words in there, so you can actually underline it all. I have it all highlighted, but the keys there are He is exhorting us to continue to pray. Amen? Mm -hmm. To pray yeah. and to supplicate. Now supplicate is a petition. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, it's a, it's, it's a portion of prayer where I'm petitioning you for something. Mm -hmm. He said, and as you petition God, you need to be thanking Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. It may not come when you want it to come. Right. It may not come the way you want it to come. Mm -hmm. But you ought to thank Him anyway. Mm -hmm. Thanking God always for all things is what the Ephesian letters say. For all things. Even when there is a sickness. I, I had a project going on yesterday. And Mike and I were together. And I was telling him, I said, oh boy, I knew right then my body was going to be in a wreck. As a matter of fact, I went to try to stand up, and, and I, I, I pulled up on his shoulder the first time. The next time, he came over and lent me his shoulder. I said, no, no, let me roll over. <laughs> and I rolled over and positioned myself, and I eased on up. But I knew I was still going to be in trouble that night. So uh, as soon as I got squared away, I got me a hot shower, and I went out. My wife said, well, where are you going? I said, I'm not sure yet. And I went out, and I came back, and when I got back, I, uh, Michael, Michael went out, and he came back. I said, you ain't got that table set up yet? See, Michael's a, a massage therapist, and, and he went on set that thing up. And uh, when he get done, he usually whisper in your ear. He said, take your time getting up. I said, well, I got to get up. Why can't I just get up? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to stay in motion. I was starting to feel better then. Stay in motion. Why can't I just take me a nap? And I did take me a nap. And then I, let, I put him on notice. I say, uh, tonight we got an instant replay. So just leave the table right over there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And do it with Thanksgiving. Amen. And then always in, in verse 18. Uh, verse 8, I'm sorry. There are two phrases. The first phrase is, first word is final. Amen. And then the last phrase is, think about these things. Now in verse 8, you'll see about six different elements that he pointed them to. But he says, after you done did all these things, I want you to think about these things. Now the wonderful thing about the Philippian church, the Philippian church, they went through. And when others started dropping the ball, amen, the Philippian church would pick it up. They didn't have a whole lot on their own, but they would pick up the slack. For the other churches that were not doing what they should and could have been doing. you see that as a matter of fact, that verse was in our uh, thought for the day. That, that verse at the very end, about in verse 19, about he says, he said, I, you know, how all these things, how God will provide all these, these different things for us. My God shall supply all your need according to what? His riches. Amen? Amen. Not according to how good you think you are. Not according to what you think you are, but he says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Amen? So, so as you identify those things, there's three things I want to leave in your spirit this morning. In summary, one is to be still. The second is to be prayerful. And the third is to be faithful. Be still, be prayerful, and be faithful. Be still. Be prayerful and be be faithful. Now that almost sounds like an oxymoron when I said that we want to talk about stay in motion, stay in motion. But then I tell you to be still. Stay in motion, but I say be still. Well, you can be in motion and be still too. Amen. Let's think about it from a, a local perspective. You're sitting in your car. You're right at that red light. Amen. You're on your way home or wherever you're going. You are in motion. Amen? But you got to stop at that light. So while you're at that light, you're considering what's going on. If you move the wrong time, something bad going to happen. So the thing is that there are times when you and I, we get so aggressive in the midst of all this chaos. Folks are panicking. They don't know which way to go. They're doing stupid things. 
And what's happening, just like the young man that, that, that turns around and just wipes his, 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 his nose on the woman's shirt and the garments and, and all this other kind of stuff. And I heard about the man that, that shot somebody in the store. And, and there's, there's a lot of chaotic things going on. Well, the Philippian church, like Mitchell, was unique in its service and its commitment to God. Amen? Amen. You and I have been blessed. As I said uh, uh, several weeks ago, this is our anniversary, our special anniversary year. We will be celebrating 75 years. Watch this now. I want you to pay attention to how I say this. 75 years that God has preserved us as a ministry. Yes. I didn't say nothing about 75 years of us doing all of this and going all over there and us knocking down walls. And, no, 75 years that God has preserved us as a ministry. Amen. That is inclusive of all our history from the very, uh, the other name, uh, Christ Baptist, when the church was first, was, was founded, Christ Memorial Baptist, and and from Mitchell Memorial Baptist, and when we were up on North Street, and then down here, and the name change and all that, that, everything is still intact because God says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you and I stay out of the way and let God do what God want to do, that means even with us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are times when you might get frustrated, times when you might get uh, a, a, a little uh, uh uh, ticked off or whatever the case might be because I'll tell you point blank there are things that God will allow you to go through and things that God will send you through oh, yeah. now that you ain't praying for how many of you if you were living during the time of Daniel and the Hebrew boys how many would have jumped up and said hey God send me into that fire I don't think so amen but the bottom line is they mm. stayed in motion. Yeah. And by staying in motion, they told the king straight up, I understand who you are. I understand the authority that you have. I understand what you're doing right now. And I understand some of the things that you're saying. He said, but, you know, because of my relationship with the Lord, mm. we're going to stand fast. Mm. We're going to stand fast where God has put us. Mm. See, I'm reminded how Paul's exhortation uh, uh, to stand still, to be still in this particular case, mm -hmm. it says be still, and it reminds me of his exhortation to the uh, to the Corinthian church in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 to 58, where he says, I want you to be what? Steadfast. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Be steadfast and be what? Unmovable. Mm -hmm. See, to stay still mm -hmm. is to, to lock in. Mm -hmm. But as you lock in, I can still be in motion. Amen? I'm still moving toward my God. I'm locked in. Things that may not be the way that I might want them to be, but I'm locked in. There are people that are around us that need to be locked in. There are people that are around us that need to see a model of somebody that's locked in on Jesus. They need to see that there is hope. They need to see that there is faith. They need to see that there is somebody that they can grab hold of. Amen. When, 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 when Sister Johnson called me yesterday, she didn't call me because she wanted to hear no nonsense. She called me, she shared with me the burden of her heart, and then she knew that where we were going to go is straight to God in prayer. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Now, the interesting thing, and I had this particular uh, illustration saved for later on in the message, but I, I just can't, get, can't, can't hold on to this one. The thing is that although she called me and she shared with me this concern, and I prayed with her, she would not let me off the phone until she started asking about all of you, and then she stopped and she had prayer with me. Are you understanding? See, if we're standing still, those are the type of things that Paul was trying to encourage his church to do. And one, one, one letter was circulated so that the others can hear the same information. And, and I guess, in a sense, God had a YouTube account way back when. Mm -hmm. uh, you can that one. <laughs> Psalm 4610 is another verse that reminds me of what Paul is trying to convey. He said, be still and know that what? I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, the heathen, and I'll be exalted in the land. His exhortation is for us to stand fast and weather the storm. Mm -hmm. 
You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. I stepped out of the house the other day and I was going to put out the trash and I had to turn around and run back in. And run back in and close all the doors and everything because I saw a fog and I smelled it so bad I was scared I was going to get a high. And then at the same time I didn't want that stuff in the house so that my mom would start acting strange. Yes. You understand what I'm going? God wants us regardless of what is going on out there. Now, some folks say, okay, they done passed the law and, and medical marijuana is here and there and all that kind of stuff. Well, let me ask you what? You got a medical card? See, some folks are using that as an excuse yeah. to do things just so that they can blend in. And God is telling us, no, 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 no. You don't have to be in the world. Amen. You're in the world, but you don't have to be of the world in order to stand still for me and stay in motion. I want you to keep moving in the direction that I want you to go. Society is torn about whether to open the economy or to monitor it for safety. Let me ask you a question. I'm not going to ask you what your opinion is, but as a safety professional, I have my own biases. But also, as a pastor, I need to apply the principles of God uh, so that you and I are always in motion for the Lord. Yes. Jesus himself was identified as the chief shepherd. Amen? And as the shepherd, he identified us as sheep. As a pastor, I am identified as an under-shepherd. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, I know for a fact, I did not hang on Calvary's tree on your behalf. Right. But I have a responsibility to remind you of who hung on Calvary for you. Yeah. To remind you of what he is expecting for us. To remind you of how he wants us to keep on moving regardless of our situation and regardless of our circumstance. I want you to think about the fact. Peter, yes, Peter did deny the Lord. But what did he do after he his heart was pricked? After Jesus looked at him and things began to change, Peter wept. And Peter got back on track. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Don't be out here judging nobody. Get a hold of them, grab by the hand, and let's walk back on track together. Mm -hmm. Bible goes on to show that. See, that, uh, that, that my, my shepherding is not limited to your spiritual walk. When we were in, in uh, Manna, we studied a class called um, Understanding People. Mm -hmm. And in Understanding People, there's a chapter that breaks down all these different dimensions. Your spiritual, your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your social. All these different areas make up the, the child of God. And God is wanting us to have all that stuff locked in on a spoke. Amen? You see, if you, you notice you got a center hub on any kind of wheel. And you have an outside to any wheel. Well, if the spokes are all tied and everything is uniform like it should be, you'll roll without bouncing and without uh, distorting. And that's what God is looking for from us. He wants us to be locked into Him. He wants us to be steadfast. He wants us to be still, as Paul was saying. I want y'all to just re be still and to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Let, secondly, he says that I want you to be prayerful. As Paul understood that there was some tension in that congregation, those two women in verse 2, he says, I want you all to support them. I want you all to, 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 to get them together, and I want all of this stuff to be smoothed out. So what? So that you can continue to move forward in unity. Do you recall that when Jesus sent the folks to the upper room, at Jerusalem, while they were there, there were 120 people. Now, 120 people, there's 120 different opinions. But I tell you what, at the end of the day, when the Holy Spirit descended upon them, and, 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 and they began to communicate, they were, the scripture says, on one accord. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You and I might differ in certain things, but the fundamental things, the root issues, we ought to be on one accord for the Lord. So in order to do that, Paul says that he wanted those folks to learn how to rejoice. And in your rejoicing, you can rejoice even when there is a problem. Even if you don't get the biggest piece of cake. 
You ought to rejoice because you got some of it. <laughs> Amen. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says, I want you to let your moderation be known to all men. The world around us should know what makes you tick. Amen. You might not tick like they tick, but they ought to know what makes you tick. I was uh, laughing and teasing with uh, my son and, and son-in-law yesterday, and I was sharing with them about how I had a co-worker. And this co-worker, uh, he and I, well, we went through training together. And uh, so every so often, he liked to shoot jabs and all that. And then every time he shoot a jab, I would defend the gospel. I would give him back something from the word. And then he turns around, and one day he just got rattled, and he got shaken. Remember now, Paul says, I want you to let your moderation be known to all men that what? The Lord is at hand, so that you're not anxious about anything. Now, there are times when folks, they get all upset, and they can get up in your grill, they can get up in your face. And while they're up in your grill and in your face, you might want to turn around and step back and say, Hey, listen, I didn't come up this way. I didn't let folks walk up on me this way. But here's what he turned around and told me. He got all ramped up and he said, Look, hey Jim, you might know God, but you ain't God. What was he saying? He was saying that my moderation and my communication was still pointing him back to God. I don't have to put on boxing gloves. I don't have to defend myself the way that I used to. But I need to make it known that I belong to the Lord. Today our world is concerned about having a shift from health to wealth. All this noise now, you know, folks was dying and then all of a sudden once we got certain equipment out there, uh, the concern is Get back to work, get back to work, get back to work. There are meat packing facilities where huge numbers of the people turned up with this deadly virus, this, this virus that actually is killing folks. And a lot of those folks, though you might give me an executive order, if those folks are afraid, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. not one single time that I sent out any communication that all the members of the Mitchell Baptist, y'all better be in church. No, I never said that. I sent out a communication to tell you, I'll be here. Those that might show up, we will be practicing social distancing. Amen. So that's why you all spread out. And that's why I don't have a problem with that. But I'm here to proclaim what God says to proclaim, to share with you that we ought to be prayerful in this set of circumstances. We ought to be praying for everybody that we don't see. We ought to be praying for those that we haven't heard from. And when we leave here, not only should we pray, but we should become obedient enough to leave this place and try to reach out and touch them, call them, find out if anybody is in need. Find out if anybody is in trouble. Amen. We all know that you can't go and visit them in a hospital. I've heard testimonies of some folks being able to communicate with their families through their iPads and things of this nature. But let me tell you something. All folks are not iPad uh, smart. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And all folks are not capable of shooting a text and receiving a text and sending a message. So there may be other ways that we have to communicate. Amen. Uh, uh, Deacon Barry Wilson up in the hospital. I tried to reach him. I didn't get any information. I tried to reach his brother, but his brother called me back, sent me a message back, said that that particular day he was struggling. Amen. But the next day he was better. Somebody needs to keep tabs on each other. Amen. That's the expectation. Not only that we pray for them, but we will find creative ways of meeting their need. Look at all these schools that have been shut down. Look at how creative the world has become in reaching out to its own. Saints, we need to be creative too. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We need to get really creative about touching our people. I remember the Bible says, heaven rejoices more over one sinner that repented than over 99 just persons that need not repentance. Let me tell you something. I, I, I want to ask you a question. You force yourself back to work, even though you know 
that you don't feel the way you should be. Now, I, we have a process right now where you get screened, and if you don't meet a criteria, you don't come in. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and we send you right back to the doctor. And all, and yet and still, we got folks running throughout the neighborhood, throughout the community. You don't know because you can't see who has it and who doesn't have it. You and I should be about the business of praying and applying what we're praying so that we can encourage folks. But let me ask you a question. How many of them folks that get rushed back to their job? All right? I rush back to my job and then I wind up in the hospital and then I expire. Huh? much of that money are you going to spend? It doesn't make sense. I rejoice and I get excited over such people. There was somebody just this recently, 51 days they spent in and out of the hospital, in the hospital, fighting this thing. There was another lady that spent 38 years. She was in and out of as a nurse, taking care of people. Then she turned around and, and succumbed to it. And then when she got up and she was able to they were wheeling her out and they were cheering her. You and I ought to be cheering our folks. Mm -hmm. Praising God for them. I praise God when somebody say, Hey, Pastor, can you come and get my, my, my tithes and my all? I'm praising God for them. Why? Because although they may not be able to physically be here, their heart is here, their spirit is here. Let me tell you what Sister Johnson told me after she finished praying with me. She said, okay, Rev, and that's what she called me. Okay, Rev, now now, now you make sure you tell your mother I asked about it and I'm praying for it and this and that. And then the last thing she said, I'll see you on TV tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand where I'm going? Yes, at? yes. We need to be praying and we need to be applying things. Paul said we ought to keep rejoicing in the Lord, praying about everything, worrying about nothing. Yeah. There are some things that can cause you to lose a nice sleep. But when you start losing sleep, it's time for you to start calling on the Lord. Why? Because God ain't sleep. God don't need a nap. God don't need a reprieve. God don't need a vacation. Amen. So, uh, even there, um, I, I took my son-in-law, he stopped by yesterday, and he was telling us about how he had just left the, the uh, uh, service for his grandmother. It's important that you and I should continue to, to try to do what we can to encourage one another. When Sister Johnson called, she wasn't calling for no, no, no small talk. She needed comfort. Amen. And that's what we need to do. And if you haven't seen somebody in a while, maybe, maybe they need you to call them first. Why? Maybe their phone don't work. Maybe, amen, maybe they're too weak to answer the phone. Just like it was with Deacon Wilson. His brother got back to me and said he was too weak to deal with that then. He said, but I was able to talk to him for 20 minutes later on. So you and I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I received so many <coughs> testimonies by way of, 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 of tweet, uh, not tweets, uh, uh, Texas this week. And all these folks, well, pray for my son, pray for my nephew. Well, well mother so-and-so, the pastor's wife here, they were in the hospital, praise God, she's out, she beat the virus, etc., etc. We need to be praising these folks. We need to be, be praising God for these folks. We need to be excited about what God is doing in their lives. We need to pray and rejoice what? In the Lord. That's the message. Yes. Whatever we do, it should be in the Lord. Oh. Lastly, we need to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Paul was trying to encourage them to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Verses 8 and 9 are, are, are marching orders for the Philippians mm -hmm. and the body of Christ today. Mm -hmm. Regardless of our circumstances. Regardless mm -hmm. of the problems we face. He says in verse 8, Finally, mm -hmm. brothers, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just. Listen to some of those reports they have out there. Everybody talking about, in my opinion, or I think this and I think that. I wish this and I wish that. I need to stop worrying about what folks are wishing for. And I need to put my confidence in what God is promising me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Finally, brother, the things that are pure. The things that are commendable behavior and conduct. You know there's folks out there that their conduct is not what it ought to be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's why some folks don't want to let folks know that they belong to Jesus. Amen. It ought to be lovely. Uh -huh. It ought to be praiseworthy. Your, your actions ought to be praiseworthy. Yeah. 
and, and, and your conduct. Matter of fact, I, somebody I pray for on a regular basis, I kept looking and I noticed that his, his truck hadn't moved. So I turned around and when I, 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 I stand out, I saw him the other day. And I walked down to where he was. He was getting ready to get in the truck. I said, all right, you know, I, I, I want you to know I've been praying for you because I've been, I've been seeing your truck. And I know that truck usually moves on a regular basis. I say, and I was wondering whether you've been locked. He said, yeah, man, for the last two weeks or so. I've been, been, been tied up in there two weeks. And, and what happens was he began to come because this is our natural inclination. We're going to come and we're going to fist bump and I'm backing up and he, he kept coming. I said, oh, no, no, back up, back up, back up, back up. You know, you know, I love you. You know I love you. You know I respect you. I grew up on you and all that kind of stuff. I said, but right now, we need to take this thing to another level. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? My behavior ought to be up to another level. I'm not that pastor, in case you were looking at the news, that got arrested down there for packing all them folks in there. I'm not that pastor that demanded that all them folks sit there in that, in that choir rehearsal and then all those folks got all messed up and sick. I am that pastor that tells you that if you're going to be here, we're going to practice social uh, distancing and we're going to do it in such a way. And if it get too thick down here, we got to overflow upstairs. We can, and, and, and for those that go upstairs, you get the benefit of drinking coffee and worship. <laughs> Amen. But you know, he says, after all these things, that's the way I want you to think on these things. Change the way you focus. Change the way you think. In conclusion, he says, I want you to stand what? Fast. Where? In the Lord. I want you to rejoice where? In the Lord always. I don't want you to be anxious about what? Anything. I want you to be prayerful in the Lord. I want you to be very specific in your supplication. God, I got a problem. God, my problem is this. God, I have pain here. God, my breathing is not what it should be. Be specific when you pray to God. Be thankful when you pray to God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Sister Johnson says she talked to her friend the morning before. It caught her completely off guard. There was no indication that that was the last time they were going to speak. But the last time they spoke, her friend told her, I miss you. Are you understanding what I'm saying, saints? He says we need to stay in motion. We need to stay in motion by being still. We need to stay in motion by being prayerful. We need to stay in motion by also uh, 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 standing fast and, 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 and being being uh, so mindful of the fact that we need to be faithful to the things that God has committed us to. We need to be a good listener. Amen? The things that we hear, the things that we ought to be doing, we ought to be practicing what we preach. We ought to practice what we teach. We ought to model the message. Here is a very delicate point for you and I. When you model the message, don't look to see who's watching. All right. If you're honestly modeling the message of Christ in you, the hope of glory, you just live it. If they see it, they see it. If they don't see it, they don't see it. And if you find out that they don't see Christ in you, that lets you know exactly where your homework starts. All right. Amen? Amen. If you find out that they do see Christ in you, what does that let you know? That lets you know where you need to humble yourself yes. under the mighty hand of God. Because there are so many folks, they begin to pat themselves on the back. And as we pat ourselves on the back, God's glory has already been diminished. Why? Because you done got what you're going to get. And folks will see you patting yourself on the back, and they don't really give serious consideration to the God that you and I serve. So if you want God to be glorified, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, I share these things about our people so that you know that our people, whether you see them or not, behind the scenes, they model in the message. Behind the scenes, they're doing what God wants them to do. Behind the scenes, they're trying to touch base with somebody else. Behind the scenes, they're trying to lift somebody up. 
whether they see it, whether we see it or not, they're doing it so that God can be glorified yeah. and that heaven can be advanced. Amen. Amen. He said, heaven rejoices more over one that repented than over 99 just persons yeah. that need not repentance. Amen. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we thank you and we praise you and we encourage, we are encouraged by you. We know, Lord, that sometimes it's kind of hard to stay in motion. Sometimes, Lord, we get despondent. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes, Lord, we don't know whether uh, uh, things are the way that they should be. Sometimes, Lord, we may even doubt whether we are, are, are doing things to, to your pleasure. But, Lord, we thank you that you are a God that sees all the details. And you are a God that tells us that if we just be still and know, be still and take time to think about who you are. Be still and take the time, oh Lord, to call upon you. Be still and pray. Be still and trust you. Be still and move in the direction that you've been sending us. God, you're going to work it out. You're going to help us out. You're going to help us to understand what it means to really be faithful to you. So, Father, we pray that you'll bless this congregation. We pray, oh Lord, that you'll bless all those under the sound of my voice. And we pray that you will strengthen us so that even though we're in the world, in the midst of all of this stuff, let us take time. Go back and do a study. Go back and read what it was like in the time that the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Go back and think about Joshua and Caleb. All those that they tried to encourage and tried to challenge and they tried to stay them from, from, from turning against the will of God because they had circumstances that were similar to the ones that we're facing today. They had no food at times, yet you fed them. They had no water at times, yet you gave them water. They were led to a place that was filled with milk and honey. Yet and still, they rebelled. Father, we are in a society today where folks are trying to encourage other folks to just be still just a little while longer so that we can make sure that we got a handle on this thing. And there is a lot of rebellion in our country and a lot of rebellion, Lord, perhaps even in our worship ranks. Lord, we pray that by your spirit, you will touch us. You will challenge us. You will bring us back to the place where we stand in need. God, be glorified in all that we do. And we will give your name the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts say thank you, Lord. And amen. For the sake of those that may may not have ever come to a personal relationship with the Lord. I want you to know that Paul also says in this particular passage, it says in verse 6 and 7, be anxious or be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Amen. will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You might be wondering, how in the world are they going through the same things that we're going through? I don't hear them mumbling. I don't hear them complaining. I don't hear that, that, that them, them out here uh, fussing and fighting and, 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 and shuck. I ain't putting no mask. I heard a, a thing yesterday where there is a, 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 a resistance to wearing a mask among men. It don't it ain't it ain't manly. It ain't this, it ain't that. I got I got I got masks. I got I got this kind. I got the same kind that Deacon that's the lesson got on. And, and and the bottom line is, it does do, do nothing for my masculinity. There are folks that feel that to surrender your life to Christ means that you no longer have anything to do with your life. It, it means that 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 oh man, I'm I'm emasculated. Oh no. Oh no. But to surrender your life to Christ, the Bible says you can have the peace of Christ. You can have the joy of Christ. Most importantly, you can have eternal life. Eternal life. Jesus told Nicodemus, 
Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. And that hasn't changed. Jesus never revoked that declaration. The Bible says, but as many as receive him, to them he'll give power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. If you have not known Christ, if you've never invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, I want to just leave you with a simple uh, uh, prayer and an opportunity, even in your own homes or on your jobs or in your cars, wherever you might be, to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came into the world to die for me. I may not understand all the details, but I thank you that you said that you died for my sin. And that if I were to confess my sin and, and, and ask you to come into my life and save me, you promised that you would do that. So Lord, at this time, I ask that you would come into my life, save me, forgive me. And Lord, by faith, because I can't see it happening, and the Bible says faith is substance of things that I'm just hoping for. So by faith, I'm asking you, O oh God, to come into my life. And by faith, I receive you at your word. Father God, we pray that if those that have prayed that simple prayer, you'll make yourself known to them. And then, Lord, would you circle them with an opportunity to get to a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church so they can get further guidance and understanding on how they can begin and continue to stay in motion on their new found joy. God, we thank you and we count on this done for Jesus' sake. Oh, I said thank you, Lord. Can you give God a praise? See, that praise is for anybody that might be entering the kingdom. Amen? Can you give God a praise for the time of worship? And at this particular time, what I'd like to do is encourage you to get a hold of somebody else, call somebody else, share with them what God wants to share with them in their lives. As we prepare to depart, let's move. As we prepare to depart, and uh, those, uh, there, there may be some that have not had the opportunity to share their, their uh, tithes and offerings. We'll, we'll take care of that as we conclude. Amen? Amen. Eternal God and our Father, again, we thank and praise you for worship. We thank and praise you for health. We thank and praise you for wisdom. Yes. We pray for your people. We pray for this ministry. We pray for this congregation. We pray for the body of Christ. Yes. We pray for every branch of Zion. We pray for every pastor, those that are struggling through the virus, and those that are overcomers in the virus. Yes. We pray for their families. We pray for their communities. We pray for their worship community. Mm -hmm. We pray, oh God, for the leaders in this country, the leaders and those that are, are exercising decisions. We know, oh Lord, every decision might not meet uh, everybody's uh, perfect uh, desire. But we pray, Lord, that we might have the kind of patience to trust that folks are trying to make decisions that are going to be to our benefit. We pray for that soul that's near as hell, and we pray for that soul, O oh Lord, that is trying to come out of the grips of this virus. Father, as we prepare to depart and go to our various homes and destinations, we ask, O oh God, that you would get the glory, praise, and honor. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, presenting us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you and greet one another in the spirit of love. Amen. No hugging, no bumping.